What's happening, everyone? In this video, I'll be covering Quicksort, another fairly efficient comparison based sorting algorithm. In prior videos, we've learned about bubble, selection, insertion, and merge sort. So, if you like this video format, I'd recommend checking those out if you're interested. In the beginning of this video, we'll cover the basics and the underlying methodology of the Quicksort, and later we'll open up a coding editor and actually implement the algorithm using the Python coding language. After we've got the algorithm working correctly, will benchmark its runtime performance against the merge sort algorithm we coded up in the prior lesson. As always, throw me a thumbs up if you find the video useful, and consider subscribing if you like to stay up to date on the rest of my Python code and content. Similar to merge sort, quicksort is another divide and conquer sorting algorithm, which uses a set of simple steps applied recursively to achieve its competitive performance. The steps of the quicksort algorithm are as follows. We first select a single element of the array to be the pivot. We could essentially pick any item, but preferably we would want to pick an element somewhere near the middle of all the values if the array was in sorted order. So for example, if we had an array containing the values 3, 2, 4, 1, and 5, our optimal pivot would be the value 3, because it's in the center of all the values if they were sorted. Unfortunately, since our original input is obviously unsorted, we have no way of knowing which element will be in the middle once the array is finally sorted. So for this reason, people normally tend to arbitrarily choose either the first or last element to be the pivot. We'll explain why we want to choose a value near the middle a bit later on. In any case, after selecting our pivot value, we partition the array such that all elements smaller than the pivot are placed to the left, then all elements larger than the pivot are placed to the right, with the pivot placed right in the middle. We then recursively call the quicksort function on the left partition containing all the smaller items, and on the right partition containing all the larger items, stitch the arrays back together, and return our final sorted array. Take note that in the GIF on the right, the rearranging or partitioning step is being performed in place, meaning they rearrange all items around an open position, then slide the pivot into that open slot. In our case, we'll be writing our function to create separate larger than and smaller than arrays, which makes it far easier to understand, but will also use slightly more memory in practice. If you'd be interested in seeing a Python quicksort implementation running in place, just post a comment below, and I'll definitely get on it. Using our five length array from earlier, 3, 2, 4, 1, 5. In this slide we can see a comparison between what happens when we select an optimal pivot and one that's not so great. We can see on the left when we select an optimal pivot, we limit the number of recursive steps needed before our full array is sorted. In effect, we achieve a more balanced recursive call tree. On the other hand, when we select an inferior pivot, such as the selection of 5 as the pivot on the right hand side, we have a more one-sided recursive call tree, so we need many more nested recursive steps before we sort the entire array. Keep in mind that, for the worst case, we need to choose the worst possible pivot on every single recursive call, which is a fairly unlikely occurrence, meaning Quicksort almost never sees its worst case time complexity. The only real scenario where this would happen would be if you were originally passed a sorted array, and you picked the pivot to either be the first or last element on every recursive call. Because, recall, we want to choose a pivot somewhere near the middle of all the values, and the first or last element of a sorted array will necessarily be the smallest or largest element, respectively. And if you're confused with the parameters being passed to each of these recursive calls, don't worry because you'll get a much clearer understanding once we actually implement it in code. As we can see on the slide, the time complexity of the quicksort is identical to what we saw from merge sort in the best and average cases, that is, big O of n log n, but is exponential in the worst case. Again, looking at this may lead you to believe merge sort is the faster of the two algorithms, but remember, big O notation isn't a function for calculating the runtime of the algorithm. It's simply a metric on how quickly the runtime will grow as a result of a growth in the input size. Big O values don't take into account constants and negligible terms, so in actuality, most of the time quicksort is the faster of the two. But we'll be able to verify this later when we run our benchmarks comparing them. In terms of space complexity, quicksort fares better than merge sort in the worst case, having only log n versus linear space complexity. We'll now switch over to a coding editor and implement the quicksort using Python. So now that we have our coding editor open, the first thing we'll be doing is importing the randint function from the random module. We'll be using this function in several places throughout our code. The next thing we'll be doing is writing a function named createArray. This will provide us with randomized, unsorted arrays we can use for testing our quicksort algorithm. We'll now switch over to terminal to ensure this function is working properly. Switching back to our coding editor, we can now begin developing the actual quicksort function. The function will be passed to single input A, the unsorted array we wish to sort. Inside the function, we'll first check to see if the length of the input array is less than or equal to 1. If this is the case, we'll simply return the input because we know, by definition, any array of length 0 or 1 is already sorted. 
We'll then create three empty lists to hold elements smaller than, equal to, and larger than the pivot. We'll then use the randint function to select a random pivot from somewhere in the input array. By using a randomized pivot, we can hope to avoid ever hitting the worst case time complexity by avoiding selecting our pivot from the same location on every recursive call. We'll now enter into a for loop where we iterate over each element in the input array. On each iteration, we'll compare the current element to the pivot and place it in its appropriate list. If the current element is smaller, we'll place it in the smaller list. If it's equal to the pivot, we'll place it into the equal list. And finally, if it's larger, we'll place it into the larger list. At the end of the function, we'll return the concatenation of the return value of quicksort called in all the smaller elements, all elements equal to the pivot, and the return value of quicksort called in all the larger elements. Now write some helper code to ensure our quicksort algorithm is working properly. After running the script, we can see our randomized input array was returned in sorted order, meaning our quicksort function is working great. The only thing left to do now is benchmark the runtime performance of quicksort against the merge sort algorithm we developed in the prior lesson. We'll be testing both sorting algorithms on randomized inputs of length 10, 100, 1000, 10,000, and 100,000. For each input size, we'll compute the average runtime for each algorithm when sorting five randomized arrays of that length. At the end, we'll output the results to terminal in a table format for easy comparison. As we can see, our new quicksort algorithm is superior for nearly every input size tested. And if you recall from the prior video, merge sort was faster than bubble, selection, and insertion sort meaning quicksort is, not surprisingly, the quickest of all five. That takes us to the end of this video, everyone. Hope you enjoyed it and can now implement quicksort in Python confidently. As well as more data structures and machine learning videos, in the coming weeks we're planning on also doing lessons on some of the more advanced sorting techniques, such as heap sort. So if you're not already subscribed, definitely hit that subscribe button if you'd be interested in seeing some of those. And if you are subscribed, consider dropping a comment if you'd like to request any algorithms or data structures to cover in future videos. And I'll see you guys next time.